In this episode, we install our Schenker water maker, the largest investment and upgrade of tranquility since we have left. But first, this is me, Kim. There is Bart, and here is Liz, our little explorer. We sold everything to explore these beautiful places with our tiny 33 foot sailboat, Tranquility. In this box is a long lasting dream of us to have on board Tranquility. We have 220 liters of water capacity and this machinery that's in the box will give us a lot more freedom. for a big project again. Are you ready? There we go. We are going to install a water maker on our small 33 foot sailboat. Wait for the wind, wait for the night. Stand here a while, take a little time. The first thing we do is to figure out a way to fit all the ports in this compartment without wasting space. We first position the water maker and put all the other parts around it. The setup of the chloride filter needed to change, so we had to make all the parts watertight again. The parts to change the setup are included in the package. Silence is everywhere, and you're not. And now I'm running like there's no tomorrow. My life was on a one way track. The same story about happy ending. Now we need just a regular hose for fresh water and the salt water supply. From this point, it needs to be a high pressure hose. I am using high pressure 15 bar hoses for the entire system. Now for me, I have this giant locker where we're gonna build in the entire system. Uh, be but because it's a modular system, I mean, you've got the uh, actual water maker, but you've got the chlorine filter for your sweet water and you've got the pre-filters, the five micron filter and the pressure system and a pump. You can also fit it anywhere else in the boat. So if there's not much space like I have in a big locker, you can also put the pre-filters on another in another locker or in another space that suits your boat. After the setup in the compartment is made, we start with getting a new water hose through the boat. This hose will get the salt water to the water maker. I think this is the best solution. We're gonna just start at the beginning. That's taking in salt water. It's a three quarter through hole with a scoop. So we're gonna have to put in a knee. Go for two hose clamps, each in a different direction. So, like this. So, next. 
next stage is we need to fit in this raw water filter. This is the one we have to clean most of the time, so it needs to be very accessible. So that's why we put it under, under our bilge, under our floorboard. Probably there. Just did the next step off camera. Underneath to go up there, and then I want it to come out in the locker here. So I have to drill a hole. Salt water intake, and then we need another hose for the fresh water. And this one goes to the pump. And from the pump, we're gonna mount another filter, probably up there. Salt water intake with the valve so no water can fall back in. Yeah, but now we still need another hose for fresh water which needs to come right up there. So here you see some blue hoses with some fresh water, but we cannot use these fresh water hoses because they run directly from our main water tanks um, but uh, fresh water needs to be pressurized so these hoses run to the main pump and then the main pump pressurizes our water system and here are some hoses that are pressurized so if we split this one we can put in a t-piece and we can get pressurized water Worked out, so we just finished uh, getting a new fresh water hose through the bilge. Now we're gonna put in a T piece right there. It's a Teflon tape. Um, it's used to make things air, water, gas tight. So four turns should be okay. Clamps over there. Uh, that's just because this is our fresh water system pressurized. So if this one breaks, um, the pump will switch on and it will pump 100 liters of fresh water into the bilge. But if this one breaks, this is still below uh, below the water line because the water line is about here. Um, so if this one breaks, there will be a seawater 
inlet which you can't hear because the pump is not switching on um, and that will run forever well of course we hope our bilge pump will ring and sound an alarm but that's why we have two hose clamps here because this is from the seawater from outside and this is only our freshwater system so what were you doing kim i'm measuring the curvature of the hull because um this box isn't flat it has to curve in so uh we want to make a plate uh, where we can put the water maker on and um well to measure the curvature we use a thick piece of paper put it in and then uh, make sure that we have touched the curvature template there we still need to take a little bit off of this side to get it down a bit more and this one is gonna be here then we can still reach the chlorine filter we can open up the uh, 5 micron filter we can get to the bottom of this pump we can access the pump the hoses and of course we can still open up and my hand can go in between so we can use the manual switches uh, what I've heard is the most important thing is you have to access this one this valve the valve that's under here and you have to be able to read the pressure you are the platform for the water maker is ready it's in here it's strong it's solid Anchor comes with this uh, foam padding, and I just cut some pieces to put it on the back side, uh, on the feet, and here as well. So on the feet and on the back side, and one in the middle. That's um, to get rid of any vibration when the pump works. In between these brackets we have um, some rubber spacers to prevent any vibration when the water maker is running rock solid bolted in place so i had to have this gap to install it otherwise i wasn't able to get to the brackets and now it's fixed with one two three four and five brackets I didn't have room for the sixth one, but um, Schenker Zen recommends to put them in place with two, uh, with four, sorry, 
two on each side, so this is uh, this is good. Be thinking, why did you put so much effort in building a base plate? That's because Schenker advise you to place the water maker uh, on top of something so the weight should be on top of something you cannot hang it on the wall because of the big vibrations that will occur during the water maker process so I think I'm fine by installing it to the sides but that's only because the weight is on the plateau and Two of the brackets are actually on the plateau and then the other ones they make sure that it doesn't fall in this direction. All right, now we're going to install the pump. difficult thing is to run your electrical cable to uh, the actual pump it needs a, a good thick cable I'm using a five square millimeter cable and it here it's another one there it is oh that's my preferred route and I got it In the control box, two connections need to be made. 12 volt supply and another cable that operates the switch valve. Electric cables are in. Let's put this one close. One hose extra. This is gonna be the brine. So the very salty water that's flushed overboard. Because that's what the Schenker Zen water maker does. It takes up to probably 300 liters of water. 300 liters an hour. And then only 10% of that 300 liters will be fresh water. So only 30 liters an hour and then 270 liters an hour will be flushed overboard. So it runs all the way along here. And then we're gonna make a hole. There.
right the raw water comes out here we're gonna follow the raw water follow 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 it comes to a one-way valve to a T going in this direction down down to the pump this is the 12 volt pump and the brain of the water maker from the pump it pushes it out to a 5 micron filter into a pressure canister from the pressure canister it goes down again all the way and into the actual water maker this Henker Zen 30 a membrane and an energy recovery system all in one pump is mechanical and turns the 7 bar pressure into over 60 bar then the water is pushed through the membranes and some salt gets parted from the water. Remember, the fresh water is only 10% of all the water coming through the pump. And the sweet fresh water departs the water maker via this blue hose. But not only comes the fresh water, water out of the Schenker Zen, this is what's called the brine. The brine runs all the way down, goes into the bilge. comes out of the bilge and goes all the way up into our anchor locker and there it dumps the brine water which is very salt water <laughs> some scary moments because I just drilled a hole in the water tank and I'm gonna tap this one in there on the top side of the water tank It just frets itself in. So I just cut the hose to length. Then we have the connection. And this small piece. It's actually a quite nice system to seal it off. And now I'm gonna put it on the plug. open up the seawater intake all right there we go that's open check if the carbon and 5 micron filter are present I already did off camera the gray lever allows you to replace the filter without spilling a lot of fresh water but now it needs to be open the reset valve needs to be closed and the depressurization valve needs to be opened just a few turns are going to push flushing for five seconds the button will beep twice and will flash quickly and the procedure starts one two three four five there we go it will run for three minutes and then it will shut off automatically. I don't see any leaks. So we're good for now. All right, it stopped. So unit is purged and the system has no air in it. We're gonna start on off. One time, there it goes. After two to three minutes, I'm gonna close the depressurization valve and build up the pressure. So now it's only drawing water. Pretty excited. So what the what the system is doing now is it's only flushing all the water, uh, but it's not building up any pressure. So um, it will not be pushed and get um, and go uh, and, and filtered so there won't be any fresh water coming out this is only purging the system we've been busy now for two to three minutes so i'm gonna close the valve and now we're gonna build up some pressure all right so operating 
pressure should be a, between six and a half and seven and a half bar. The clicking sound, and that's the energy recovery system. So that's where the brine water is used to build up the pressure inside the membranes. We push flushing, and the valve switch opens. So fresh water from our tanks runs into the water maker. So he's taking fresh water now from our main water supply for one minute uh, to flush the entire system and desalinate it. So it will be fresh again in the membranes. Perfect, perfect test. Wow. The operating procedure is done now. Um, let's do a normal run. The Schenker Zen 30 has a very simple operating panel. Only two buttons. Press on to make water and press it again to shut it off. But you better press flushing because it will flush the system with fresh water and after one minute it will shut itself off. Flushing preserves the membranes. There are also some programs built in. If you hold on for a few seconds it will beep once. Release and the Schenker will make water for one hour and automatically flush afterwards. If you still hold on after one beep, you will get two, and a little later, three beeps. These are the settings for two hours or three hours of making water. And now we're only gonna go for on. There we go. If you look at our battery monitor, you would see we still get 8.5 amp hours into our battery bank. So, this is really the advantage of a Schenker water maker. Uh, because it's got the energy recovery system, it only draws 120 watts or uh, 10 amps uh, to make water. So it will cost you 10 amp hour to make 30 liter of water. The water maker is giving us water. Here I have the water. Let's taste it, I'm excited. Salt water from the lagoon. Here, there, just the water out. Well, this was it. If you have any questions, please let us know. And for now, goodbye and thank you very much for watching. Fair winds to you all.